The Goat House is back with score predictions and picks against the spread for every single NFL game in week 11. We're here every Wednesday with this video. Loads of content here, so join us, but let's get into all these picks. Starting with a Thursday night battle between the Commanders and the Eagles, a battle for the NFC East. It's really the only two teams that have a shot to win that division. I'm going to go with the Eagles in this one. I do think it's a game that could go either way, but a few reasons to go with the, with the Eagles. The Commanders are beat up on the offensive line. They're going to get Brian Robinson Jr., their star running back, back, but all their tackles are currently injured. I'd imagine a couple of them hopefully play for them, but they're a little beat up there. Latimer's not playing for them yet. The Eagles' defense is playing out of their minds. Have they seen this Commanders' offense yet? Not quite. They handled the Bengals' offense pretty well. The Commanders, have they seen this Eagles' offense yet? Yeah, not quite. They haven't seen this running game yet. I still think you could run the football on the Commanders' defense, even though the defense is getting better. So I'm going to take the Eagles' running game at home, primetime football. Let's monitor the, the Commanders' tackles. But 26-20 is what I got the Eagles' Winning by here, six points. But, yeah, not one I would put money on, really, even though I have the Eagles covering the spread. It just It's new for these two teams. They haven't really seen each other yet, so it's going to be a big learning experience for this week. But Eagles home prime time, siding with them. Packers at Bears. I have the Packers handling business here and covering the 5.5, winning 23-13. to 13. I would be a little hesitant to put money on this one, though. Division rival game. The Bears are usually a little better at home. The weather could start to drop off. Is Love fully healthy while going to play on you know, an interesting field? It's not the best grass over there. But like I said, Bears typically good at home. Not so much last week against the Patriots, but they also switched offensive coordinators. So does that give them a boost? So there are some factors that could help the Bears I'm confident with the Packers in this game, though. I don't think there's going to be much of a difference with the Bears' offense. Maybe a little bit more. The Packers' defense is playing pretty well this year. I, I still like the Bears' defense, but the Packers will do enough in this game. I have them winning 23-13. to We'll see how they are off the bye. Very curious to see where Love's health is at. Can he get to 100%? Because if he can get to 100%, he's going to be better. Packers are going to be better. They can make a run in the playoffs. Make sure to check out our weekly pick show already up on the channel for week 11. We also have Power Rankings, a recent mock draft that went up. So join us, like, subscribe to notifications on the Jags at the Lions. This should be an absolute ass beating, snot pounding, somewhere in that range. The Lions do not take it easy on these types of teams. And they were actually off their game, the Lions, last week. I think that helps them for covering this very large spread of 13, which I usually stay away from. But the Lions are going to be mad that they didn't live up to... You know how they play, even though they won last week, and they're gonna they're gonna punish the Jaguars for for it. it's gonna be Mac Jones likely again. Couldn't do much of anything last week. They had the run game going a little bit, but they won against the Lions. The Lions are one of the very best stopping the run, maybe the best in football stopping the run. And the Lions offense should have success. The Jags run a lot of man coverage, and the Lions will feast off that. They can run the ball on them, and St. Brown typically feasts off man coverage, and Jamison Williams with his speed. And Jared Goff is usually much better versus man. I mean, it favors the Lions by a ton. A ton more than 13, in my opinion. Jag season is obviously feeling over. So I like the Lions 31 13. This has got to be an Aspie. And they got to win by at least two touchdowns in this game. So I would actually put money on them minus 13 here. Vikings versus Titans. The Vikings had a little bit of a scare last week against the Jaguars. And I'll tell you what, the Titans' defense is better than the Jags' defense. But I think the Vikings get back on track here. They've been moving the ball pretty easily. They just got to finish in the red zone. I think they'll do that. But why it really favors them in this game is, is Will Levis in the in the Brian Flores' defense. Flores' defense has been really, really good, really confusing for inexperienced quarterbacks, especially inexperienced quarterbacks that tend to turn the ball over. So you have a double whammy here with Will Levis in there. I do not expect the Titans offense to be able to do a ton. There's a chance the Vikings offense struggles a little bit and they'll do a little bit more than last week as they can move the football here. So Vikings 23, Titans 13. I'd feel comfortable which if you're doing a parlay and you want to use the Vikings money line, they definitely should, should handle business in this one. Raiders and Dolphins, the Dolphins finally got that win with Tua back. They were really close a couple games before that, so now they go, and they do match up pretty well against the Raiders because the Raiders cannot run the football, and so the Dolphins really don't have to worry too much about stopping the run in this game, and the Dolphins should be able to score on the Raiders. I do worry about pressure getting after Tua with Max Crosby being out there, so that could be a reason maybe the offense stalls sometimes, but I think the, the Dolphins run the football. Their running game should, should be pretty solid. It's a tough one to pick against the actual spread of 7.5 because it is a big line. The Raiders off the bye. Do they get something going here? They, you know, they fired Getzey. 
last time we saw them, after the last time we saw them. So new offense coordinator. So 7.5 seems like a little bit. It's going to be right around there. But I do feel comfortable using the Dolphins in a teaser parlay leg there at 2.5 if you want to go money line to be even safe. That's that's perfectly fine. So I am very confident with them winning the game by at least a field goal. I don't. Th- there's a chance they beat their ass. I'm not really going to predict an ass beating here, but um, Dolphins should handle business. I got 24-17 Miami. Rams at Patriots. The Rams were a little disappointing last game against the Dolphins. The offense kind of looked a little sloppy. They couldn't finish drives. Defense looked pretty solid, though. I think the defense, because it's full of young players, will continue to get better. So I think the defense plays a pretty solid game here against the Patriots. And the offense got a couple offensive linemen back last game, so it kind of made sense. They were a little sloppy up front there. They'll get back on track. I know the Patriots defense played really well last week. They played the Bears. And the Rams get back on track here. Some people labeling this as a trap game. Yeah, it could be a little cooler this week in New England, and the Rams, their L.A. guys over there, that could be the only reason it stays close, but the Rams should handle business here in this one. I, I would take the minus four and a half. Five and a half was the original line. I was a little, I probably wouldn't have said take it at that. Four and a half just makes me like it that much more there. They should win by at least a touchdown, but we will see here, but give me the Rams. Browns in the Saints. The Saints favored by a point. I got a gut feeling about the Browns, and and not just the gut. The matchup, I think, sides with them as well. The Saints did catch some fire last week, upset a really good team in the Falcons. The Falcons are much better than the Browns, but where the Browns are much better than the Falcons is their defense. They play really solid defense. We saw it almost every week. We saw it against the Ravens. And the Saints, again, without Olave and Shahid. Uh, you know, MVS got some clutch plays last time. I'm not expecting that stuff. I don't think the Saints offense could do enough in this game. And yeah, their defense can create turnovers on James Winston revenge game here. But the Saints defense has really been struggling to stop the run. And now is time for Nick Chubb to get going off the bye. He's been back for a few games. He gets going. The Browns run the ball well. James has to take care of the football. I think they can win even with the turnover. Uh, but their defense is what really wins this game. So I am feeling the Browns. I would take them money line as it is pretty good odds. I have them winning 20 to 16. I also love the under. I cannot believe it's at 44 and a half. I'm trying to figure out why they put it at 44 and a half. It actually started 43 and a half, went up to 44 and a half. Browns defense is legit. Saints offensive line is not legit. Their receivers are not legit. MVS isn't going to do the same shit he did last week. Kamara is legit. Car's all right. I just don't expect enough from the Saints offense, and we know the Browns are going to be conservative because they know they can win this game just running the football, which would mean the clock will run. So this should stay under. Definitely should stay under, and i like the Browns to win. Gut feeling there, 20-16 to Cleveland. Many change here from our weekly pick show for Week 11 last night. I went with the Jets, and I'm still on the fence, but Anthony Richardson is now the starter for the Colts. And that, and that on top of Devontae Adams being out with an injury and an illness, not out of the game, he's out of practice right now. So something to monitor. But those two things have me pushing towards the Colts here. And plus four looks pretty good. I almost said just bet on the plus four. If you're feeling that as well, if you really feel like the Colts are going to win, you already did, you feel even more so like they're going to win, maybe go with that plus four. But you actually can use them as a teaser plus seven, ever, seven and a half for pretty good odds. Uh, so I do like that as well, pairing it with something else. But, yeah, Anthony Richardson, you can argue he's worse than Joe Flacco. You can argue he's really struggling for sure, and, and he's not the best quarterback on the planet right now. But the matchup definitely favors Richardson in general, but Richardson over Flacco. The Jets' defense is solid. It's been going downhill since Salah left. They're pretty good stopping the pass. They're not so good stopping the run. Where they're really not so good at is stopping running slash scrambling quarterbacks. We've seen it every single week for the most part, especially since Salah has been fired. And I was all over Kyler Murray and the Cardinals last week because of it. the Cardinals are much better than the Colts. The Colts are sneaky, though. They play teams tough. And there's a reason they put Richardson in. He's going to run well in this game. Jonathan Taylor is going to run well in this game. So give me the Colts. Give me the Colts with Anthony Richardson being in there and I'm monitoring Devontae Adams' injury. But I do like the Jets' offense in this game because Rodgers has been up and down this year, but he's going against a very predictable cover three defense that isn't the best on the planet. So I think Rodgers should should have a solid game and Brees Hall should have a solid game. Garrett Wilson should have a solid game. Coaching's not too going so hot for the Jets right now, though. I'm leaning Colts right now, 26-24, a little more scoring than people think in this one. Uh, and the Colts are a pretty safe play if you want to use them as a teaser leg. I, I'm almost tempted to take them just plus four, you know, that alone right there. Or the it's a pretty good money line pick. If you're feeling the Colts upset, 
get some good odds there. Uh, but let's let's monitor that Adams injury as well. A battle in the AFC North, the Ravens and the Steelers. It's going to be a tight one. It's going to be a squeaker. I'm feeling the upset here. I'm going to go at Pittsburgh in this one. There are a few trends that you could follow in this game that all lead to the Pittsburgh Steelers. One, they typically play well against Lamar. Lamar doesn't play his best ball against Mike Tomlin's team, the Steelers. Number two, 80%, maybe just under 80% of the time in the Tomlin versus Harbaugh era, the underdog has won the game outright. That is pretty absurd. The Steelers are the underdog. And seven out of the last eight meetings between these two teams, and Lamar hasn't played in all those, but the Steelers have won the football game. So all of the above is siding with the Steelers. Now, it's it's a new game. It's a new year. Anything can happen. It's a test for the Steelers' defense. I believe in their defense no matter what here, but it is an offense they haven't really seen yet. They can run the shit out of the ball with Lamar or Derrick Henry. And the focus, why they play so well against Lamar, they make sure to contain him, but... They never had Derrick Henry. They've had good running backs in the backfield in the past. Now they got the king, Derrick Henry, so he could go off in this game. I definitely could see that scenario. Steelers defense will do a solid job, though. Uh, and then the offense is playing very well. I mean, look at the Steelers teams each these past years. They've always been good, but this is as good as the offense has looked in some time right now. And it's a tough game plan since Russell Wilson fairly new. You know, not a lot of film on that. And the Ravens' defense is really struggling lately. They could stop the run. They were really struggling against the pass. So Pittsburgh at home, being in the un- being the underdog actually helps, like we talked about. I, everything's kind of pointing towards the Steelers. I could see a scenario where the Ravens just dominate them. Just Derrick Henry goes crazy. Lamar goes crazy. He's been playing like an MVP once again. Could see it. Things are pointing towards the Steelers at home in this one. I like that they have more bounce than the Ravens. The Ravens typically have more defense than what they have right now. So it would be a very entertaining game. I would use the Steelers. Uh, if you love those trends and you're already picking the Steelers, you could take them plus three. Uh, I would like them uh, getting seven and a half points. Part of that teaser like we have a lot of options in this video, so you can kind of compare those together there. But uh, this AFC North battle should be a fun one. Falcons Broncos another great one this week that's kind of a toss-up I think the matchup really sides towards the Broncos a little bit of a test for them though because they haven't really been able to beat good teams they beat the Bucks Uh, you know they got destroyed by the Ravens they had the Chiefs at least so that kind of tells me all right maybe they can play but going back to that Bucks game I think it's a similar matchup here the Falcons don't play the best defense so the Broncos should be able to get going in this game. They don't have the most explosive offense, but Audric Estime kind of taking over as their lead back. I love that. Actually, I think he has a solid game. And they make sure to control the clock. They know the best part about the Falcons is they have an explosive offense. they got a good quarterback, good running back, explosive playmakers. They want to limit their chances. The Broncos, I think, will win the time of possession, so they'll drain the clock, which result in a little less scoring. I think both teams will be able to move the ball, but a little less scoring because the Broncos controlling the clock, winning on the ground, being able to run the ball effectively. This could be their best rushing performance of the season. I would look for estimate and the collection of backs, but Nick's scrambling as well. And I love the way they're playing defense. Again, a test because it's an explosive offense and they're hungry after being disappointing last week. They moved the ball. They just missed field goals. So they could bounce back because of that. But the Broncos are playing really solid defense. Bijan has been going crazy the last couple weeks. He's not going to be able to do that. He could have a good game. He's not going to go crazy like he has been. So I like the Broncos. In that altitude, mile high, give me Denver, 20-17. to 17. they gotta, they got to win the clock. they got to win the time of possession like I think they will. Estime has a solid game, and they pull this one off. This is one of the tougher ones to pick of the week, though, so I would pass in terms of putting money on it. Seahawks at Niners. I got the Niners taking care of business 27 to 20. This is a little bit of a tricky one to pick against the spread. The Seahawks, I mean, re- reality is they, they could pull off an upset here. They could the, the Niners special teams could cost them the game. Seattle's off the bye. Something clicked at the end of the last game, the last meeting between these two teams. So they they could get something going here. But the Niners defense seems to be playing better. They played really well against the Buccaneers, explosive Buccaneers offense last week. Last time they played, the Niners had a big lead because they were completely outplaying them. They kind of let it slip away, but they had a big lead because they were completely outplaying them, but they were running all over them. Jordan Mason was running all over them until he got injured, and then Garendo was running all over them. Now they have the Christian McCaffrey back, so I'm going to not overthink things here. I'm going to think the 49ers stick to the ground game. 
I think they can pass if they want to, but they control the time possession. They dominate the ground. The defense, like we said, I think it's playing a lot better right now. We'll see, but I think it's playing better right now than the last time these two teams faced off. So things are kind of siding towards the Niners. I wouldn't put money on it, though, just because Seattle's off the bye. Did something click last time they played? Do the 49ers special teams make it close? I thought the Niners were a good pick against the Bucks last week, and I still kind of think the logic was there, uh, minus 5.5, because... They outplayed them. The defense did their job, and they just missed three field goals, though. So that was kind of the issue. So, And they muffed a punt. So special teams, in general, could just screw you if you put money on them. So that's why it's a little tricky. But give me the ground game, the run game. Niners 27, Seahawks 20. Heavyweight matchup that I have as a tight battle here. But I am monitoring some key injuries for the Buffalo Bills. Amari Cooper, because Keon Coleman already out. They could use Cooper, but a big one. Dalton Kincaid, their young tight end. And that is huge because the Chiefs, if there's one area they struggle with, they can't cover tight ends. They can't stop tight ends. And I know they have Dawson Knox still, but Kincaid is an absolute weapon in this game and can really can open up things and it creates, you know, a game plan for the Chiefs. They got to worry about this guy. So that kind of opens things, you know, other things up. But I think he'll be open as well. So Kincaid's a big one here. And if both those guys are out, I could easily flip over to the Chiefs. So monitor those injuries. But either way, I do like the Chiefs as on another teaser leg, plus seven and a half. If they lose, they're not going to get their ass kicked. They can win or they can lose close. You know, this game is going to be tight. These are. These teams are more defensive teams right now. The Bills at any time could be, both of them at any time could be an offensive team, but Bills' defense won them, them that game last week, and the Chiefs' defense has been winning them games like crazy. Um, you know, the Bills want to run the ball a little bit more than the past. You know, to beat the Bills, you run the football a lot, and the Chiefs are pretty effective there, but that's not where they're going to just, you know, just pound the football and just drain teams out with that. That's really not their game. So things are siding towards the Bills in this one, the way the Chiefs offense has been playing. And it's tough to stay on that streak, stay undefeated. So in Buffalo, I felt like they saved some things last week for this game. If this was in Kansas City, I'd be going with the Chiefs. But again, I am monitoring those injuries. They need Kincaid out there. So that's a big one to watch for sure. I think the both tight ends, if out there, could have a big game. And the Chiefs are going to be struggling to kind of figure out which one. But I think a lot of rolling running clock, these defenses still play very, very well. They can create some turnovers. So a little bit lower on the scoring. 2019 Buffalo is what I have for right now. But again, the Chiefs as a teaser leg seems like a lock because if they lose, if they lose, is this game's going to stay close. And no one's going to get their ass beat in this game. I really don't think. Sunday night football, another big time game, another tough game to pick. Interesting matchup. Uh, Going to be a learning experience for us and for both these teams here because the Bengals have a great offense. They don't have a great defense, and they're going against a great defense. So how will this offense – the offense was not consistent. It did not do enough against the Eagles defense, who's playing very well. How will it be against this Chargers defense? And is that, you know, if they're not lights out, does their, does their defense let them down? And for the Chargers, they're on fire right now. The defense has been on fire. The offense is really picking it up. But if you look at their resume, their schedule, it's not their fault, but they've played the weakest teams possible. That's who they beat on the weakest teams. I believe that they could beat good teams, but I want to see more of it. I want to see this defense take on this great offense right here. I'm going to take the Bengals. They had a mini buy, and the offense does enough. Chargers' young corners have looked pretty good, but it sounds like Higgins could be back on top of Chase going crazy right now, and Gesicki's a factor. So I think it's a little too much for those for those DBs out there. You know, I think they'll play well in the red zone. I'm, I'm, I'm predicting a lot of moving the ball, but some field goals in this one. The Chargers are going to try to pound the football and just control the clock. They could definitely succeed at that. The Bengals' defense was so far awful this year. But they picked it up last week for three quarters against the Ravens of all teams, and they completely had a meltdown in the fourth quarter. So is there something there? Are they going to get a little bit better? They do have a really good defensive coach as their coordinator, so as their defense coordinator So in Lou Anaromo. So it's, this is a big learning experience for this game. And another team, that the, this, this game's going to stay close. It's going to stay close. So the, the Bengals plus 7.5 uh, is another teaser leg. Looks pretty damn appealing, but this should be a really fun game on Sunday Night Football. Monday night football, Texas battle, the Texans versus the Cowboys. The Cowboys obviously beat up. They don't have Dak Prescott in there, right? But Micah Parsons came back last week, and he was a problem. He can be a big-time problem in this game because the Texans' offensive line is really struggling. So that's kind of 
Part of me is like, God, could the Cowboys keep it close because of that? They just don't really have anything else going for them. And, and the weakest part about this team is their run defense. And the Texans, the best part, going into the year, it's like, yeah, Joe Mixon's super nice, but they have Stroud, they have all these these weapons. Like, the passing game's the best part and end up being wrong. It's good. The running game with Joe Mixon is the best part. Joe Mixon's going to go crazy in this game. And Nico Collins is going to be back. So, I, I think Stroud, him... Dal- Dalton uh, Schultz against going against the Cowboys' his former team, Tank Dell. They could also have a solid game, even though I'd watch out for the pressure getting after Stroud. They should do enough in this game. They should, alone with the run game, they should handle business. I thought about the under, really thought about it, but there is, an, uh, there is a chance that the Texans go crazy 30-plus points, or they can cover that themselves almost, so it's a little tricky. But I would use the Texans in a parlay as a, as a money line option here. Um Thought about the tease at two and a half, but again, yeah, Micah Parsons could be a complete game record this pass rush. It just depends on the Texans' play calling. Do they stick to the run game as they should? We will see, but I am confident with them as I think everybody is uh, here with that with this game. But here's a recap of all the picks I made against the spread. It doesn't mean I'm betting or you should bet on all these. I'm picking every single game against spread every single week, and you saw my record over here during the, re- the whole rest of the video there. But um, yeah, so you can kind of freeze the you know pause the uh the video and take a look at those throughout the video i highlighted which ones were the best but yeah join us on the channel on our channel every wednesday we have this video tuesday night we have our weekly pick show it's a lot of fun and we had a mock draft go up we got power rankings we got trade videos we got you covered more than anyone so like subscribe to notifications on me much appreciate it's gonna do it thanks for watching goodbye